Prison World is a RimWorld inspired storyteller with elements from other games like Sons of the Forest, Seven Days to Die, Valheim. The story is you are trapped on a prison colony planet, similar to that of many sci-fi movies and books, and you want to escape to your home planet. Prison planet is very hostile and most resources have been depleted long ago. Mostly aggressive animals can survive and much of the planet is toxic. However, many eons ago this was the home planet in the galaxy, and there are many ruins from that time. However, mostly in hostile places and deep in caves. Many factions exist on this planet. Some are neutral and willing to trade with you, but they will kill you if you cross them. But most factions are hostile to all living things. However, you are not the center of the universe in this game. But this planet's resources are instrumental for survival for everyone on this planet. Escape from the planet will take a long time. But once you leave the planet, you need to avoid battle with the galactic military that put you on the prison planet or you will become just another ruin on the prison planet if you make it back you will be able to live out your days in the home world or you can return and try to bring peace to the prison world it will not include insects or mechanoids but many other similar threats due to the pollution many of the clans are mutated and are far from human some behave brainless like zombies and cannot handle weapons but are deadly due to the larger clans. Some are however insect-like and move very fast and also have animals he helping them in combat. Some are very few but huge and only do melee combat similar to the trolls in Valheim. Caves are a big part of the game and exploring them can be dangerous but very fruitful. But this is also where many galactic military bases were located once. If you can find them, you will find treasure. That is, if you can get in. You need to either hack, find a password, or bring explosives. However, the entrances are often well hidden and you need to find clues to know where they are located, or you can just dig randomly. All bases will also have a forwarding address to the next base in line, if the current one is attacked. Like in perhaps Rimroll Agent Vault scenarios. This goes in a loop, so once you are back to the first one, you know you have discovered all the bunkers but there are also marine bases with entrances located under the water and then you need deep water sonar to locate them and maybe a submarine or a good diver to get in some things will be similar to RimWorld others won't you won't get a detailed list of skills for every person that entered the map unless you have found all the galactic military bases which contains files for all the prisoners on the planet. If you don't have that yet, you will have to capture them and interrogate them to know what skills they actually have. And if you want to know what illnesses they have, you have to examine them by a skilled doctor. Why am I calling this prison world and not prison planet? Well, three reasons. Prison world is a less common name. I'm doing it as an homage to RimWorld and it will feature several planets, not just one planet. The main planet will be the prison planet, there will also be the home planet, and the third one is the multi-planet. The multi-planet is for multiplayer, on that planet there will be a finite amount of material, so if one faction maybe hoards all the plasteel, no one else gets any. They will have to either join that faction, attack them, trade, or build with other materials. It's possible to do a wipe, but then someone has to nuke the whole planet and kill everyone. Only then will a new planet be generated, and then everyone starts from scratch. It will feature traders just like RimWorld, but the only traders that will visit you at first are the saviors. A religious cult that forces you to build shrine etc. to approve to the gods before they will trade with you. Trade caravans are common, but they do not know until you publish your village on the local charter. The caravans will then include you in the trade route unless hostile villages are nearby or the train or weather is too difficult. There will also be a trade fair every spring and every fall where all friendly traders meet. However, the bandits attack this trade fair sometimes, so it can be deadly. Bring guns, lots of guns. The preferred ending is leaving the planet and returning to the homeworld, but it won't be easy. If you manage to return home to the homeworld, you can continue with the colonists you left behind, but you will also be able to play something like save our ship for the ones that make it into orbit. And it's not over yet. Once you return, you can explore your colonists' apartment and let them continue with their lives. You can also draft them and commit crimes. If you're caught stealing, you'll be in jail for one year. 
if you murder someone, 10 years. Once in prison, it would be very boring. But you can do wreck time, train at the gym, eat meals or study. However, if you kill 10 people or one guard, you will be sent back once again to the prison planet. What makes RimWorld such a great game? For me, it's the best game I've ever played and I have spent over 5,000 hours in the game so far. However, I noticed quite early on that most people on YouTube played with mods. I've never modded a game before, but with RimWorld it just felt natural. Subscribe to anything in the workshop and the game got a lot more interesting. I don't think I would have spent more than maybe 500 hours with the game if it weren't for all the great mods that made the game more like I wanted to play. Rimfold has over 20,000 mods at this point and there's, I think it's very weird that modders do not get paid at all either by, the un either by Unity or the game developers and have to beg for some money for coffee so I will make my game pretty unique by gi giving a percentage of the profit to the people who actually make mods for my games. Why don't I just make a RimWorld mod then? Well, I think everything that is possible to do within the RimWorld framework has been done. I have a lot of ideas and I don't want to be limited by code someone else wrote 10 years ago. RimWorld also has a lot of limitations when it comes to frames per second, graphics and multiplayer support. I don't plan to make a clone, I plan to make an older brother of sorts. I'm not even sure it's gonna be top down. Isometric is also an option and that would be impossible to do in a mod for RimWorld. How can I be sure people want to play my game and make mods for it? How will I make sure it's fun? I have a legendary ace up my sleeve. I will do something no other game developer in history has ever done. I will listen to the players. Sure, some studios check reviews and YouTube videos, but that's rare. I want the people who play the game to get a say in the direction. I know if you make random polls and let people decide things, you end up with boating like Boatface and other silly things. I will offer voting inside of the game for important milestones, but it won't be a democracy either, where everybody gets one vote. People who have spent thousands of hours in the game will have a stronger say than people who just started. How will I make the game? Unity is the obvious choice since Reworld was made in it and is the biggest and most powerful engine for 2D games. However, I am not the first person to try and make a game similar to RimWorld. Martin Glade launched his own community project called Porcupine in 2016, which is RimWorld in space. He also did a 72 episode long YouTube tutorial where he explains all the code for this project. The project was however more or less abandoned 3 years later, but you can still download demo Unity game on GitHub and contribute if you want to do that. I've tried the game and thought this was a good start for my project, but I think it's missing something essential. What makes RimWorld so good? The game is however basically a city builder with survival combat. But is any of that really necessary? There are many ways to play RimWorld, but many involve building a base. But it's always optional. Most people will probably try the Vagabond challenge one time or other. Don't stay in one place over a year and then you have to move on. Some people will even try the challenge where you never even build a single wall. And there is also a good example of the Viking scenario where you start when you're just about to raid a village, you have absolutely nothing. But if you win that fight, you will take over their village. So it can be played without the building. So it's not really a city builder at its core. What about crafting? You can craft a lot of things, but you don't have to. You can get most if not all craftable objects by looting or trading. Then it must be a survival game then. Sure, but you can still play on peaceful and get much of the RimWorld experience but without the violence. Something you cannot remove from RimWorlds are the stories. I remember this one time, my colonist had a mental breakdown and decided it was a good idea to bang on my shameful storage. Whoops! <laughs> I remember one of the first time I played with royalty and accepted a quest to house 14 refugees. I built them a house with separate bedrooms and heating. I gave all of them new clothes and fed them. All along they had conspired to kill me and that was the end of the colony. 
I remember the first time I played the game and wanted to try and hunt something. I thought Mega Sloth, they look like a big monkey or something. Man was I wrong. It was a monster that killed everyone. Next playthrough, a Mega Sloth self-tamed. I was scared shitless it was gonna turn mad and kill me. All it did was poop on the floor constantly. I remember when I built a colony in the rainforest. I did some mining and some killing and some harvesting and everything was going great. Then an insect hive decided to pop up outside the base. I'll just let them be for now. Maybe some raiders will take care of them. A few weeks later and I had over 100 insects and every visitor had died. The cave now was so big it started to collapse and every time an insect died they thought I had something to do with it. Apparently they do not understand gravity and came attacking my base every time. I tried everything but it was pointless so I had to flee to another map. I remember the first time I encountered a psychic ship. What the fuck are Terminators doing on this planet and why are they sleeping? I did not know what to do so I just ignored it until my male colonist went crazy with a minus 40 debuff. I built a fucking Disney world of traps and mazes and sandbags between me and those posh terminators. Turned out it was just shiters this time so I, I survived and was so satisfied when all my colonists like a team banged a psychic ship to pieces. One of the most recent stories was with biotech. I liked the option of my colonists being able to have children. I just had my first and he was nature running and playing a little bit outside my base. I got to notice a bear was hunting one of my colonists. Well I just sent him back inside the base and the bear will eat a rabbit or something. The bear was right outside the entrance and the colonist was my 3 year old son. He did not have any weapons, armor and he could not outrun the bear. I told him to beeline for another entrance but the bear got to him and killed him in one swoop. Not just that, he ate the whole body. There was no amount of glitter tech that could have saved him. Well, maybe jetpacks, but they don't make them for kids, I think. Tyna was right. RimWorld is not a game. It's not a book or a movie. It combines so many things into stories that you create. So a storyteller, that's really what it is. And if you want to make a game like RimWorld, it has to be a storyteller at its core.